Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Tony is speaking from the Entertaining Speaker Manual, project number three, with the heading Make Them Laugh. So it's quite a challenging task. Uh, the objectives are prepare a humorous speech drawn from your own experience, strengthen the speech by adopting and per personalizing humorous material from outside sources, deliver the speech in a way that makes the humor effective. It's five to seven minutes. Thank you, Jan Hendrik. Ladies, gentlemen, our third speaker of the evening, Tony van der Wat, speaking to the title of The Meaningful Hotels of Our Country. The Meaningful Hotels of Our Country, Tony van der Wat. Mr. Toastmaster, ladies and gentlemen, my abiding memory of the Gruner Hotel in the little one-horse hamlet of that name in the desert, the southern part of Namibia, is sitting in the breakfast dining room with a view through the large door to the kitchen, where the lady owner of the establishment was trying to part company with a wallop of many positive attached to the spoon, the label that she'd scooped out of a pot, and trying to deposit it, or shake it off, onto a diner's porridge plates. Being sticky, the mealy pop was adhering to the label, despite all her efforts. And also, being elastic, it was elongating and shrinking <laughs> in sync with her physical actions. Eventually, with a Herculean effort, she managed to part company with the wallop of Millipop, which, being elastic, bounced when it hit the plate. <laughs> and being sticky, took the plate with it. <laughs> she pulled the plate back, picked it up, and with a jug of milk, came through and deposited it on a diner's table. And then she came and approached me and asked me for my order. Would I like mini pop or cornflakes? No prizes for guessing which one I chose. <laughs> well, some you, you might wonder now, why do I recount this little story? Well, it is to impress upon you that to know our country, one must travel not only the highways between the grand hotels of the country, Mount Nelson and the Maharani, but also the byways between the little hotels, the desert hotels, the bushveld hotels, the country hotels. Doing it that way, you get to really know our country and its people, and you get this wonderful sense of knowing the people of your country. Well, some of the country hotels, of course, take great pride in providing all of their requirements, their vegetables, their eggs, their milk, on site while others are compelled to do so because they're so far away from sources of supply. And here I refer to the Fields Drift, <coughs> me, Fields Drift Hotel on the Orange River between Northern Cape and Namibia. Mm -hmm. The lady who brought in the coffee in the morning was very really embarrassed to tell us that there could be no milk yet because bringing in hands the cow she hasn't been milked yet. Mm -hmm. So it had to be black coffee. Well, by breakfast time, the, well of course in there it was quite obvious that the catering department of this hotel depended totally on the world revolved around whether Daisy had been milked or not. By breakfast time, there were jugs of milk on the tables for our cereal and our coffee, so Daisy had obviously made her contribution to the team efforts. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no way that you can get your milk still warm from the cow so fresh in one of the grand hotels of the country. Right, now let's travel right across the subcontinent to the Mantenga Falls Hotel in Swaziland. A notice board on the long driveway up to the hotel informed patrons that all our vegetables, milk and eggs are produced on site. And what's more, the hens are free range hens, therefore they lay eggs that are more nutritious and taste better than any other eggs. Now, as anyone who grew up on a farm will tell you, free-range hens don't all lay their eggs in the places where the owners want them. They go build their own nests in a haystack or under the 
made in the cow shed. The person whose task it is to go and collect the eggs might miss the here and there, miss a certain nest one time, the next time, the time, quite a few times. So the eggs that reach the kitchen might well be freshly collected. They're not going to serve fresh eggs up in my door. Little old lady at the table next to me ordered a boiled egg, three minute boiled egg. Opening the top of her egg, it literally exploded. <laughs> Black, the herbs, and smell all over her clothes. And ladies and gentlemen, if you know anything about rotten eggs, as I now do, there is no pond on earth to compare with that of a rotten egg. <laughs> Northwards now, let's go to the Transvaal Loafer as it was, a Hazy View Hotel to be specific. The bedroom, charming little residences, little cottages in the garden. The one allotted to me was just across the fence from the African bushveld. Now, the problem is the African bushveld is home to African wildlife of various sizes and degrees of unfriendliness, like the toad that crept in under the door, the gap under the door, the telecopter of plants. Not very dangerous, admittedly, well, I wouldn't want to take off the bed with me but the snake that followed it, which is definitely an unpleasant visitor at 10 o'clock at night. I didn't wear my shoes to bed that night, but I kept a very close at hand so as to step straight into the middle of the morning and not walk around barefoot in the early night. Now off the seaside hotel on the wild coast, we had notice on the, menu, on the restaurant menu proclaimed that we anticipate your every need. They did indeed, as good as they were. Instead of peppermints to aid the digestion, they gave their diners ingredients to cope with the indigestion. It's spoke volumes for their confidence in the chef. I could give you many more charming examples of South Africa outside of the Grand Hotels, but you know, you've got my drift. To conclude, just a few useful pointers to enhance your stay in one of the little deserts in Lowfield or the country hotel. Check your shoes before putting them on in the morning. You never know what small creatures have crept into them. Sometimes some of them with rather nasty stings on their tails. <laughs> Don't complain about the farmyard smells and noises, like sheep bleating and cocks crowing at 5 o'clock in the morning. That's part of the supply chain that keeps the place going. Don't complain about the time taken for your dinner order to arrive from the kitchen, because the kitchen there doesn't function with the, with the speed of a spur in, in the big city. Finally, don't complain about the coffee. One day, you too will be old and weak. Mr. Toastmaster.